Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored, prosperous, victorious? Praise. Are you hungry and thirsty? Not for the world. How many of y'all know there's a battle going on? How many of y'all know you're in it? <laughs> Everybody's going through something, amen? Everyone say, but I'm going through it. Going through it. That means you're not stuck in it. You're going through it. How many of you know the end result is victorious as long as you're in position? You know, God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, which is actually truth understood. It's knowledge understood as truth. Amen? Would you turn to Luke chapter 19? There's a battle position always in our life. The enemy's always trying to take position so he can mislead us, deceive us, steal from us because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus from the beginning said, I've come to bring life into life abundantly, and I've come to bring a sword, not peace. Not that we wouldn't have peace because there's a peace in you and I where we can rest in the Lord because we trust all the way through. But there's a sword that must be used. And if the sword is not used, there's no advancement. In other words, the Lord gave us the law, and in that law, it's the spirit of the law, the spirit which is deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow. In other words, we've got to fight. If you're not willing to fight, you become a casualty. And too many people give up, they become religious. They forget that this is a military operation. And it's constant. In Luke 19, verse 41. Hallelujah. Let's speak this together. Is everybody there? Is anybody there? Praise God. Now, as Jesus drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that made for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Then he went into the temple and he began to drive out all those who bought and sold in it, saying to them, it is written, my house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple, but the chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people sought to destroy him and were unable to do anything, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Again, this is a parable, which is also so associated with a parallel when God's speaking. This is something he's done. Everything he, do he did is always a parallel in the spirit realm. And in this, Jesus draws near to us. He draws near to someone to position that person with peace. Peace and trust. But because of something that they did, they miss his timing of his visitation. They were not discerning. It's because they were still living in the past. So, he hid it from them. Or he removed it from them, allowing their enemies to surround them, close them in, and eventually level them. See, this is something important because one of the things that happens is 
Because when we miss the opportunity of escape that God gives us, he's asking us to not only grab hold of this opportunity, but return to the wings of protection. But that cannot be accomplished if people are still living in the past. They are living from the past, for the past, and in the past. And that's what happens to these Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, and so forth. Because people are still living in the past because there's a battle of position for the past or the future. So we're either in the past or we're in the future. There is no in-between. If you're in between, then you're in the past. Now, the past is associated with the old, the flesh, self. Slavery, death. People live from the past and live for the past. And in there, there's people miss opportunities because they're not living in the future. Missed opportunities because an individuals are living in the past still. Why? Because they can't see it. Remember the Lord said, You're, you won't see it. You're gonna, this is going to be hidden from you. And he says, if you stay in that position, eventually your enemy is going to come and level you. That is the danger of living in the past. Past or future. Now, living in the future is being new all the time. You're living in the spirit, not in the flesh. Living in the future is not living for self. It's living for Christ. We live from the future and live in the future. There's a difference. We live from the future and in the future. There's freedom in the future if you're living from the future. There's life, not death. And there's always divine opportunities from God. Always. The Word says that without revelation, my people lose the restraints. See, in the future, there is revelation that maintains restraints. When a person begins to lose restraints, it's because they're not living from the future anymore. They're living from the past. They're more relying on themselves than God. They lose identity of who they truly are. They, steal, they allow it to be stolen. Many times in this, because they're still living from the past, for the past, and in the past, they refuse to reach a true repentance level that would have Allow them to move into the future. Many sorrow over what they lost and not what they did. There are people that are more sorrow, sorrowful, upset with themselves because of what they lost instead of what they've done. That's because... They're living from the past. And it all begins because what we talked about before, what they originally agreed with. It takes one wrong agreement. Then they become children of the world and children of wrath by living in the past. So we're talking about past or future tonight. The battle is that position. It's every day for me and you. Every decision, everything. I'm going to either live from the future to the present or from the past to the present. And if I'm living from the past, I'm living for the past and in the past. And I'm bringing it into the present so I'm not bringing the future into the present. That means whatever a doctor's told me, I am. Anything that's been told to me from my past, I become. 
The Word says we are a new creation in Christ, old things have passed away. But too many times people have not, the Word says, because we've not learned. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Again, it all begins on a simple agreement. One of the words that people will begin to say, I can't. Why? Because they're still looking at themselves in the past. The word says, I can from the future. There's a difference. Works of the flesh, people grumble and complain. Why? Because they're still fighting for themselves. Why do people get offended? They fight for themselves. All of that's a part of the past. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost is the future. Anything other than that is the past. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Compromise, complacency, laziness, offense, and blame is all from the past. Because if you're living from the past, you're not willing to take responsibility. You want to put it on someone else. It says, do not love the world. I want to explain something to you. The world is the past. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Do not love the past or the things associated with the past. If anyone loves the world or the past, the love of the Father is not in him. Does everybody understand it? For all that is in the world or in the past, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world or of the what? Past. And the past is what? Or the world is what? Passing away. And the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Can you do the will of God from the past? No. No. Love the world, love the past. Because the world as it is, is not of the future. It is passing away. And the past cannot do the will of God because his will comes from the future. We've got to begin to get an understanding of this because of the attacks, deceptions, and influence of the enemy that is trying to not only come steal, kill, and destroy, but take away the areas of who we are and exchange our identity for who we were. You know, that's one of the first things that they recognized with Jesus. They, could, they couldn't figure it out when they saw what this new man, this new creation. They never saw him with the anointing. And when he showed up with the anointing, they were like, wait a minute. Isn't that Mary's kid? Isn't that Joseph's son? Wasn't he being an apprentice as a carpenter? How come he's got all this wisdom? How come there's a presence about him they couldn't figure it out because they were still living in the past see the past can't understand the future that's what it can't comprehend why because light is from the future darkness is from the past and the word tells us that darkness can't understand the light is everybody okay Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. Past or future? In verse 16. We are going to see things a little bit different tonight. Let's say it. 
Verse 16, I say then walk in the spirit as the spirit of the past or future. Ah. Uh, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the what? Flesh or the past. For the past or the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so you do not do the things that you desire or wish according to the past or the flesh. Remember, the flesh is the past now. That's why the Word says we're to no longer acknowledge anyone in the flesh. Because it's considered the what? Past. Even it said don't acknowledge Jesus anymore according to the what? Flesh. Because that's the past. You don't look that way no more. Hallelujah. Is everybody Okay. Let's go a little further. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things of the past that you wish. Verse 18, but if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law of sin and death, which is the past. Now the works of the flesh, or the works of the past, are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time what? Past. That those who practice such things of the past will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of, of the Spirit, or to live according to the future, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Here's something. Self-control. Which means control over self. Against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ, who live from the future, have done what? Crucified the flesh or crucified the what? The past. If you're living truly from the future, for the future, and in the future, your past is crucified. With its passions, its desires, its addictions, its fears, its offenses, its stubbornness, its rebellion, all of that, it's been crucified. Only if you're living from the future, for the future, and in the future, from the future. Amen? It says here, if we live in the Spirit, which is the future, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited. Why? Because it will affect your future. Provoking one another because it will affect your future. Envying one another because it will affect your future. Again, Jesus lived from the future when he was here. He didn't live from the past. He lived from the future. He came to do the will of the Father, but he had already come. It says that he had always crucified before the worlds were done. Because there's no space and time for him. So he is future all the time. Amen? Everything he saw was for the future. He, he came and died for me and you sacrificed, put, had flesh made for him, accepted all the pain and suffering, humiliation, because he saw the future. He knew the end result of the future. In fact, he sent his angel to tell John to write down all the end results of the future. Revelation. End results of the future for man. The Spirit, even the gifts, reveal the future. Is everybody okay? Romans 8.
We must examine ourselves all the time. Am I living from the past or the future? What am I living for? So what am I living from, what am I living for, and what am I living in? Romans 8, 28. What does it say? And we know that what? All things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his what? His purpose. For whom he what? Foreknew he also what? Predestined. The word predestined here means placed in the future. You were predestined. You were placed in the future to be conformed to his image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, who he placed in the future, these he also called. So he placed you in the future and he called you to fulfill a mission. That mission could only be fulfilled from the future, not from the past. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. This can only manifest if we are living from the future, for the future, and in the future. Does everybody get this? Because that's what places us with him. Always. What then shall we say to these things? If God is what? For us who can be against us. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us what? All things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Wow. It is God who justifies. So by living in a future, you are justified. By living from the future, you are glorified. Not from the past. See, too many people are still living from the past in the present. And they haven't changed. Because you can't change living from the past. You stay the same no matter what you do. You stay the same. Predestined means placed in the future. James chapter 1. Healing does not come from the past. It comes from the future. Deliverance doesn't come from the past. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> People are always saying, but they live in the future. I mean, live in the past. They're butt butts. But self justifications. James one twenty one. Is everybody there? Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with the meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Is the word of God from the past or the future? Future. Amen. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, if he's a hearer and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, his carnal identity. For he observes himself, he's looking at himself now, Goes away, immediately forgets who he was. Because identity's been stolen. Because that individual is no longer living from the future, but from the past. But at one time was living from the future, in the future. But that was stolen because of an agreement. It only takes one agreement to come out of position. 
Is everybody okay? Again, hear and don't do, observes and sees himself. Only in the natural realm, the carnal ways, not being a doer, only seeing self, immediately forgets who he was in the future. Or she was. But those that are doers of, are under, of the perfect, our perfect law, which is, you know, what's the law of the Spirit? You know, deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, right? They will be blessed. Those that are what? Doers. And in verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, and continues in it, and it's not a what? Forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Does blessing come from the past or the future? Yes. I'm telling you, we got to grab hold of this. If anyone among you thinks he's religious, self-righteous living from the past, that's what religion is. And does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart. This one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and do what? Keep oneself unspotted from the, and what's the world mean? Past. Unspotted from the past. Unspotted from the past. Amen? Galatians 6. Galatians 6 and verse 7, past or future. You know, again, God knows the intents of us. And our intentions are either from the future or from the past. Our motives are either from the future or from the past. That's why the word says, submit to God and resist the devil. Submitting to God, living from the future. Able to resist the enemy in the present. Because if you're not living from the future, you can't resist him now. He'll easily deceive you. Galatians 6, verse 7, let's speak it. Do not be what? Deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, that he will also reap. He who sows to his flesh, which is your past, will of the flesh or the past reap what? Corruption. But he who sows to the spirit is, or the future will of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, or for in due season we shall reap. If we do not lose heart. Therefore we have. As we have what? Opportunity. Which is divine appointments. Let us do good to all. Especially to those who are of the household of faith. You sow in the past. Or you reap corruption. You sow in the future. You reap life. God will bring divine opportunities. To sow in the future. For someone else's life. Second Timothy two. Is greed from the past or the future? Past? Hey, thank you. So greediness is from the past, isn't it? Selfishness is from the past. Amen. Second Timothy two twenty one. Second Timothy two twenty one. Whoa, yes. Oh, happy days. You know, again, I living from the future for the future and in the future is living in the spirit. There's no fear. Because you are now walking in perfect love. 
And, and, and in that, there's no fear of anything. That doesn't mean that you can't get afraid of something. Do you understand? Because sometimes there's a sense of fear that protects. But you're not afraid because you're living from the future. So you're dead to the past, and you're alive to the future. It makes a totally different life. And not many people reach that understanding. That's why they're always frustrated. That's why they're always countered. They're always in survival mode. They're never in surrender mode. That's why they're angry and bitter. Because they have no idea who they even are. Oh, I'm, I love Jesus. I'm a Christian. No, you're not. Because if you are, you live from the future. Amen? Verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the past, he will be a what? Vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work in the present. He says, flee also youthful lust. Well, what's associated with that? Future or past? Past. But pursue what? Righteousness, faith, and love. Where is that? And peace. Is that in your past or your future? Future. With those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So he wants you to associate with people who are living from the future, not living from the past. You know how many people fall because they associate with people living from the past? Because they have corruptible seeds. And let me share with you, falling isn't even about going back and using drugs or whatever. Falling is falling from the future. That's what it is. It's falling from the life of living in the future for the future. See, you can't live in the future unless you're li living for it. So we live for the future because we live for him. Our life is hidden in him because we're living in the future then. Verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife, which not, does nothing but promote the past. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach and patient, which means endure. And what? Humility is pride from the past or the future. Past. Correcting those who are in opposition. In other words, who are in the past. If God perhaps will grant repentance so that they may know the truth and come out of the past. Amen? And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, which is in the past, or what I mean, in other words, living in the past, living from the past in the present. Amen? Having been taken captive to do by him to do his will. So he tells us here over and over, we've read the scripture thousands of times. Cleanse ourselves from our past. So you can become a vessel of honor. A vessel of honor cannot be an individual that lives from the past. According to the past, for the past. And in the past. Amen? Cleanse from the past, cut loose to escape the will of the devil by living in and from the future of Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2. And what does the word say? If I build on those things that I've been escaped of my past, <laughs> it's... It's an abomination. All these people that lie and manipulate, they live from the past because they're of the world. 
In verse 1, second, or Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world or according to the course of the what? Past. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh or lust of the past, fulfilling the desires of the past and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Wow. Once walked according to the past, fellowship, in other words, once we were walking in fellowship with the spirit of the past, which he's called the spirit of rebellion, it's a rebellion toward God, allowing the desires and fleshly desires of lust to control us in our lives. They're known by God as children of the world and children of wrath. So at one time we were known as children of the world and children of wrath. It was the wrath of God. Many turn, ma many... Many are torn, I'm sorry, between the past and the future. They're torn between the world and the spirit. Only living in the present controlled by the past, never reaching the fullness of Christ. Too many. And they're missing opportunities of escape. Because they can't trust God or anyone else, only self, unable to face or comprehend the reality of truth. They're bound by blame, bitterness, selfishness, fear, pride, and anything else that is a protector of self, which keeps that person in the past, even though they're living in the present. You ever get around someone, man, you know, I, I used to act just like that. You know, I'm, I, you know, especially as an addict, you know that addict character. You know that addiction character, that manipulating, lying, deceiving character. You know it. That's of the past. There's many things that you will get around someone and go, man, that's a character of the past. Man, where's your fire for God? You're all mouth. All mouth but no action. All mouth and no fruits. The devil is all mouth. He's trying to get everybody to live with him in the past because <laughs> he ain't got no future. <laughs> Ephesians 4. <laughs> Ephesians 4. And verse 17. Hallelujah. You know, every one of us at some time recognizes a member or a character in us that all of a sudden, yo, that's past character. Get out of here. Amen. See, but recognizing it keeps you connected to the future. If you're not able to recognize it, <laughs> it gets worse. Ephesians 4, 17. Is everybody there? This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind. Having their understanding what? Darkened. Why? Because they're living from the past or the future? The past. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling emotionally, 
having given, them, given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you've not so learned Christ who is from the future. If indeed you have heard him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you were to put off concerning your former conduct the old man of the past, which grows, which grows, which grows and grows and grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the what? The new man from the future which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Wow. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin, don't, and don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why? Because you will end up living from the past again. And nor, nor, agree, nor, nor give what? Nor give place to the devil. Listen, one agreement of the past will open the door to the devil. You must repent quickly. The longer it takes you to repent, it's like a pinhole in a boat. You'd be busy fishing. Too busy to realize that water is up to your knees. And then you become the bait. Nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Why? Because it reconnects you to your past. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace, or the plan of escape, to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed, from the future for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, which is of the past, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. We're to put on the new man from the future. Amen? Amen? <laughs> I'm going to go to Romans 8 for a minute. Romans 8. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ who do not live according to the past. Oh. But according to the future. Does everybody understand this? You got this now. Grab hold of this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, which we already know what the law is. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, right? For what the law could not do in it that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the past, but according to the future. That's how it's fulfilled. You're still living according to the past. Then you can't fulfill that freedom. You're missing the requirement. But you don't understand my circumstances. I don't want to. Either does God. He says, let it go. Cast your cares upon him. Free cares for you. Why? Because he's trying to position us and maintain us in the future, not the past. People are always concerned about everything are caught in the past. Fearful, butful. Meeful. And useless. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the past, but according to the future. For those who live according to the past set their minds on the things of the past. Hello. Hmm. 
But those who live according to the Spirit, according to the future, they set their minds on the things of the future. That's why he says, set your mind on the things above Christ who sits next to the Father. For to be carnally minded, which is past minded, is death. Think about this. To live according to the mind of the past is death to me and you. But to be spiritually minded, to live from the future is what? Life and peace. The word says those who set their minds on the Lord, they have peace. Because the mind, carnal mind, the past mind is enmity or hatred towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. It can never, your carnal mind can never be converted. It will never be saved. It must be crucified. So then those who are in the past cannot please God, which is in the flesh. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. If you haven't grieved him, he's not stepped away. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. Now, that's wild. That's why it's so important to be filled, baptized in the spirit, and maintain that position. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Why? Because we're living from the future, for the future, and in the future. Is everybody okay? And I'm going to close at Colossians 1. I think we got it. If you didn't, you'll get it. One way or another. Colossians 1 verse 9. Past or future? Verse 9, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Is that from the future or from the past? Future. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Again, patience and long suffering with joy. Not woes is measies. Not tantrums and baby Huey syndromes. Amen? But giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light or in the future. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. We are not. We are the body. He is the head. And that can only be established if you're living from the future. For the future and in the future. Other than that, you're still living out of the head. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in, that in all things he may have the what? Preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness 
should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind because you lived in the past, by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you do what? If you do what? Continue in the faith with his connection to the future, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have became a what? Minister. So here we are living from the future, for the future, and in the future. We become the headless warrior for Christ Jesus. Amen? There is a difference, and we must begin to recognize this, especially the things that are going on now. You will see many people still living from the past, for the past, and in the past that are proclaimed to be spirit-filled believers, and they are not. They can, I don't, listen, the gifts are without reproach. You can be tongue-speaking and still live in the past. Amen? But you'll know them by their fruit, won't you? You'll know them by their fruit. Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. See, there's a, there's a difference. We must be living for the kingdom, no longer for our kingdom, his kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, again, we thank you for your mercies and grace and the word that was released into us and the seeds. We ask that you protect these seeds that they grow and bear fruit for your glory. And Lord, let this revelation Tighten the restraints on us so that we may be well-pleasing to you. In Jesus' name.